Hi guys, I'm coming to you live from my backyard today. Today we're going to talk about the dermis, uh, which is directly underneath the epidermis. So looking over at the picture here, we just talked about the epidermis and how it's this top little wavy layer like that all the way across and it peels off and reveals this uh, little bumpy under layer called the dermal papillae. And uh, <laughs> so we're going to um, go from here and talk about this layer and all the good stuff that's contained inside. So the dermis, uh, derm just kind of means skin. So when we have epidermis, we have epi above the skin and hypo under the skin. In this area, we find a uh, connective tissue proper and it has collagen and elastic fibers and reticular fibers. So as you can imagine, it probably has some loose areolar because remember that's the kind that has all three different types of, of fibers. Now whereas the epidermis did not have any blood vessels inside of it, we are highly vascularized here, which is why any sort of paper cut or anything that invades into that area will definitely send you bleeding because you can see all the red and the blue, the blood vessels that lead all the way up to the very bottom of the epidermis right there. So very good blood, su uh, blood supply. Also nerves. In this picture, I believe uh, they're kind of yellowy. You can kind of see them reaching out, just kind of spreading out. It's like a spider web that just spreads out over the whole entire thing. And then we have lymph vessels. Lymphatic, remember, is what re uh, takes all the lost fluid that seeps out of the arteries and veins and puts it back into the blood. What do we find inside of the dermis? The main things, we have our hair follicles, oil, and sweat glands. So we're gonna spend just a section on hair by itself, a, a section on glands by itself. So that way you don't get too much in one time. All right, let's take a look at the layers of the dermis. Now, first of all, just as a review, I'm going to make this a little bit thicker so you can see it better. Okay, that didn't help at all. Let me try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so there you can see the edge. The edge of the epidermis is quite easy to tell. So what was this basement layer called? What was the bottom layer? That was the stratum basal. Okay, what is this layer right here? As opposed to, you can see this layer right here. And then I can't tell if this is the four and five or if it's just goes from three to five. So remember how that fourth layer sometimes eh, it's iffy. I can't tell from because I can't see the edge of the picture here. All right. So anyway, the papillary layer is this wavy part right here down below and it creates little bumps called papillae. Okay. So P A P I L L A a papilla is one papill E is two or more. Now you have papillae on your tongue, uh, okay? Your tongue has little bumps, which are the uh, taste buds. So we call them uh, papillae, okay? It's another fun word. There's so many, so many fun words to say. So these papillae is just a, it's just a Latin word for little bumps. And so if I were to pull my epidermis off, ew, but you would see all these little fingers and bumps, and that would be the papillary layer. It's made out of connective, areolar connective tissue. So we can see lots of different fibers. We have loose connective tissue from here to here. And we have dense connective tissue from here to here. And then so that top layer of loose connective tissue, ooh, hummingbird, <laughs> cool, is all made, that is that papillary layer. It's the bumpy up and down. And each of these little bumps is a papilla or papillae, okay? Um, let's see what else, uh, in which the collagen elastic fibers form a mat with blood vessels. So we don't see one in here, but you'll see maybe a cross section of a blood vessel or the longitudinal section of a blood vessel, but it, you will definitely see lots of blood vessels. This particular section didn't have one because it's just a small slice, but you can find um, blood vessels, arteries and veins and capillaries all found inside of here. So this is the papillary layer, which contains, um, areolar connective tissue. So you've got your collagen, your elastin, and your reticular fibers all found inside of there. Okay, the papillae. So if I draw my little line again, so that's the bottom of the stratum basal. Basal, basal, I sound French every time I say that. And so each one of these little bumps is called a dermal papillae. So these are just all the projections that 
squish their way up inside the epider uh, epidermis. They contain capillary loops, so you'll see, well, let's see, blue, sorry. So they're like a vein, and where's red? How do I have not, don't have more colors? I don't know, oh well. We'll, we'll use orange and pretend uh, that that's uh, a vein. Or blue is a vein, red, orange is an artery. So you'll find these little loops of capillaries inside. You'll also find nerve endings pop up and then kind of hang out like right there. And then uh, tr touch receptors too. You've got lots of different kinds. We'll talk about the different kinds later. Some do heat, some do pressure, some do soft touch, some do hard touch. It all depends on what type of uh, touch receptor it is. Now the dermal papillae are found huge, big honking ones on your feet and your hands. The reason because is these are, if this is the dermal papillae, the above layer will also, the epidermal layer will also show these ridges. And what that does, these ridges make your fingerprints. And so if you notice, you've got fingerprints and palm prints, but you don't have arm prints. Why? Because we don't have the dermal papillae. We have the layer that separates the two, but they don't wave up and down like that because we don't need so much friction there. So that's why if you, I, I don't know, when maybe sports or something, something rubs up against it too often, the layer between the epidermis and dermis will actually slide past each other and fill with fluid. Guess what that is? That's a blister. So you get them on your hands too. Um, so if you separate these two layers from each other, and then that bubble will fill with fluid, that's a blister. So that's why you get them when you do yard work and stuff or working with your hands a lot. So the point of these is just to increase the surface area of your skin on your hands and your feet, and that increases the friction and allows you to hold on to stuff better. Um, so if you had super smooth hands with no ridges, things would be slippery and we would drop stuff a lot. I must not have ridges because I drop stuff all the time. Okay, the reticular layer is below the papillary. So we've got, there's epidermal, okay. Then we've got the papillary, ow cat, <laughs> papillary. Right underneath that we have the reticular layer. This is made up of dense, irregular connective tissue with lots of collagen. We need lots of collagen, why? Because collagen is what kind of gives your skin the recoil. Um, elastin will snap it back but the collagen gives it a lot of strength because collagen fibers are the thickest out of all of them. And it holds on to water, which is why hydrating yourself is good for your skin because it plumps up all the spaces in between and makes the, uh, your wrinkles go away, or at least not so much. Collagen and the reticular layer also are what are responsible for flexure lines. A flexure, li I can't spell, that's an E. A flexure line is found where the joints crease the skin. So. Your knuckle has little creases. That's a flexure line. Same thing right there. On your hand, see all those little things? Those are flexure lines. On my arm, where it flexes, that's a flexure line. Those are all caused by little creases down here in the reticular layer. Okay, the reticular, continuing on. No, that's the same exact one, just with a picture. Very strange. All right, here's a picture. So here's your uh, epidermis up here. Here, d down below this, this is your papillary layer, all this right here, and then here it is right here. That would be the reticular layer that is uh, made up of dense, irregular connective tissue. So I don't know why the slide came up twice, that's weird. Okay, your color of your skin is dependent on pigments. And so when we look at our skin, some people are white, some people are yellow, some are pink, some are brown. It all depends on the types of pigments. Now we know of melanin, we're used to that one, but there's actually a lot of pigments that are found in your body. There's three specifically, the first one being melanin. Melanin is made out of amino acids, so that's a type of protein, and it ranges in color from yellow to black. We're used to brown and black, but there are some yellow melanins as well. Darker skin obviously has more melanocytes, lighter skin has less. My daughter has none. She is iridescent. She glows in the dark. She's so white. Uh, freckles are accumulations of melanocytes. So whenever we get a whole bunch of them all grouped together, ta-da, you, you got a freckle. And UV, UV radi radiation, UVA and UVB, will cause a buildup of melanin, and that helps to actually protect the nucleus of your cells. So here's a picture down here. 
So we can see that it's in the stratum uh, basal layer. And so they're kind of crazy looking. They're not a nice normal cell. They kind of reach out and grow and go psycho from there. Um, and so you can see them in here too. They look like spiders, um, kind of or squished bugs. I don't know, however you want to think of that, but they're kind of all over the place. We've got keratin, which is, it sounds, carrots. They have carrots in it. So this would be a yellow to orangey pigment that accumulates in the stratum corneum, whereas the melanocytes or the melanin is in the stratum basal. So uh, we usually find it associated with fatty tissues uh, of the epidermis because if you look at fat, if we were to cut open someone or suck fat out of them, they're yellow. It's yellow. Fat is yellow. Ugh, it's gross because of the carotene. Or this person right here may have a disease or as my mom did to my little brother, uh, he loved carrots and he ate so many he turned orange. And so she took him to the doctor, said, why is my boy orange? And he goes, stop feeding them carrots. So you got to be careful with the amount of carrots that you eat. Usually all the keratin tends to um, pile up in your the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. So if you eat a lot of carrots, that'll be the first place it turns orange. If you eat a lot of carrots, then it'll spread out. Then we also have hemoglobin, which is a red pigment found in blood cells. And it's what makes me pink. Um, so the blood underneath is kind of what gives us our pink hue. So if someone loses mass quantities of blood for some odd reason, you can tell because their skin becomes white and because there's no hemoglobin, there's no blood underneath it. Okay, problems with skin color. There's a couple of fun little, I won't say diseases, but things that definitely tell doctors there's something wrong. One is called cyanosis. Cyan is a color blue. And uh, when you're really cold, you know, your fingertips get blue or if your lack of oxygen, uh, it's called hypoxic. You don't need to know that. But basically that's just your skin starts turning blue. Easiest place to tell is in your eyelids and mm. your gums. And so if those are pale or blue, then there's something wrong with you. You're not getting enough oxygen. Er erythema, the erith part means red. So the ema kind of means uh, blood or skin. And so erythema is just when you have a fever and your cheeks and your forehead get red or you're really angry or you blush. I don't blush, but I, I know there are people that blush super easy. And so that's when all the blood flows to the capillaries directly under the skin. Or allergies gives you your red nose and red eyes. Pallor is a white pale skin. Yellow is the best I could come up with. But if you get um, like all of a sudden you feel nauseous and you're face goes white or you're super scared like you're riding a ride or you're at not scary farm you're angry and your face turns white instead of red even low blood pressure can make you look pale so pallor is just really pale white skin so here is um, you can tell on the baby has blue hands and feet so that's cyanosis now that's totally normal when a baby's born because it takes a while for all the blood to get oxygen and, and uh, sorted around. Here's the erythema. So we got red patches all over the backs of the legs. And here's pallor, but for some reason only on those fingers, which means that she's not getting a good blood supply to those fingers. And they could potentially fall off. So that's not good. All right. Also, jaundice. Jaundice is a uh, yellowing of the skin caused by accumulation of bile. Bile is normally what we uh, help to digest fats in our body, but if we have too much of it, um, it can turn you yellow. Usually, that means you have a liver problem. Uh, my dad, right before he died, uh, died of liver problems because of alcoholism, and he was yellow. I walked into the hospital room and I'm like, damn, he's yellow. Um, so I knew that his liver was not functioning a proper, properly. Another one, bronzing, just like it sounds, you know, like fake tan. You get a bronze metallic look to your skin, but it's not because of fake tanning, it's because of Addison's disease, which improperly, improperly uh, metabolizes um, metallics in your blood and then it shows up in your skin. And then of course bruises. Bruises are um, where, uh, or called a hematoma is a fancy name for a bruise. That's where you get a whole bunch of blood under the skin and then it goes through a series of color changes as your body breaks it down. So let's look at those. There's jaundice. No, that's not my dad, but this is about what he looked like. So compared to, I can't tell if this is the same guy before and after or his twin or what, but um, there's definitely yellow. Here's the bronzing. So you can tell it looks like someone dusted her with a nice uh, bronzing powder a little too much compared to this hand. 
and there's a big fat gnarly bruise uh, softball players and I've noticed have the gnarliest bruises Sam I'm sure you could show us a few um, but those are yeah the best bruises ever um, so that just kind of shows you some problems with your skin so let's just kind of go back real quickly and take a look so the dermis you want to know the two different the main layers the papillary layer and the uh, and the reticular layer underneath that and what can be found so if we go back to this picture I like this one loose connective in the papillary and dense connective in the reticular layer papilla little fingerprints or the little bumps that cause fingerprints uh, allow you to grab onto stuff and don't lose them as quickly three types of pigments melanin keratin and um, hemoglobin gives you different colors and then problems with skin color so this is fun we can diagnose problems in people with these colors okay guys so uh, keep an eye out for the quiz on this section and uh, give you a couple days to work on that so we'll talk about all this good stuff tomorrow so have a wonderful evening bye bye